Some of you have headphones and want to run the Twinplex on headphones. It's always good to see if, uh, if the uh, radio can actually drive headphones and you don't have to use these little add-on amplifiers like I've been using on some of the demonstration videos. Here's the transformer. It finally came in. It's a beautiful triad transformer and it transforms 100K down to 3000 ohms. Not perfect, but uh, that should do the trick. And uh, this is the new tube video uh, number three, where we actually disconnect the amplifier and try to run headphones directly. Here's the little transformer that I found that uh, I want to try in the Korg new tube regen. So we'll be mounting this little guy inside. I cleared a space for him here in back of the radio frequency choke near the earphone terminals. So let's get that guy installed and see if we can uh, drive headphones. So you might remember where we left off before adding the output transformer. The bias was set somewhere around 0.7 volts and it's at 0.649 so the batteries have gone down just a little bit but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to increase that to the maximum because uh, we want the tube to be completely cut off, the new tube to be completely cut off again before we start to increase the current in the audio stage with the new transformer. Also we have to hook up a, a 2000 ohm load on the output terminals and uh, we'll be coming across that load for all our measurements. So that's our requisite secondary impedance uh, with the little transformer that we've added here. So we need to increase this, get this up there, full blast. Okay. Almost 2.8 volts, that's where we were before with our batteries. So we have full bias on the audio. It's also stage. good to know the actual impedance of our headphones. Um, I say impedance, but let's, let's talk about the resistance of the headphones first. You know, 2000 ohm headphones are supposed to be uh, presenting a, a reactance of at least 2K. These actually have a resistance of 2.3K. So these headphones are probably a little higher impedance than 2000 ohms. This is a 2.2K resistor, which is probably a little higher than that, that we're going to use as our substitute headphones. Uh, and I'll put a, a, some clips across that, and then we'll use our RMS voltmeter to measure, measure the output, putting in a, a standard strong broadcast station. We should see that wiggle. Then we'll substitute in our real headphones and see what we can get out of this thing. See if we've got uh, listening volume. Now the nice thing about these headphones is that they're designed to be extremely sensitive, like with crystal sets and that kind of thing. So I don't have any really w real worry that we're not going to hear anything. But I do want to get the bias set and see what the audio quality is like. So we've added the little transformer. And it has a, uh, a primary of uh, 100K according to the box and a secondary uh, of 3000 ohms. So it's 100K to 3000 ohms. I think that's actually going to be a pretty good match for our headphones. And uh, they claim that this thing is capable of 0.5 milliamps DC or 200 milliwatts. So it is a small transformer. I don't know if it would do 200 milliwatts, but uh, that's what the box says. So let's see, see if we can get this bias. Well, I should have, would have, could have blew the cord to smithereens. All of a sudden it got very bright on the audio amplifier side 
and I checked the bias and we were up way above where it was happy dissipating. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then I saw it. I had the transformer hooked in backwards. So I had the low impedance side on the plate and the high impedance side on the headphones. <laughs> so I quickly disconnected it and it seems to have biased okay again, but I probably uh, did a little bit of uh, what we call halt Hoss testing. This is uh, what we call highly accelerated life testing um, <laughs> on, the, on the Korg new tube. So if it works after that little uh, faux pas, I will be surprised. So we can see the regen is uh, demodulating AM and the RMS voltmeter is working against our test resistor very nicely. Mike, if you've ever listened to the show, you know that my long list against electric cars is very, 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 very long, including uh, the raping of the land for minerals and nutrients to make those batteries that are non-recyclable. So I actually am picking up stations with the headphones. Um, and the, the regen control is working normally. The audio is working normally. But I don't think I have as much gain as I would have with a real tube. I would say it's about half the volume that I'd expect out of a regen. So the Korg new, new tube is definitely down on gain. I don't have a perfect transformer either. Remember this transformer is 100k down to 3000 ohms. So if I had something more like a, a 300,000k transformer going down to 2000, maybe the audio would go up a little bit. But all in all, um, it is tolerating the transformer. And it, uh, it tolerated my over dissipation event where I hooked the transformer up backwards and uh, really over dissipated the tube pretty, uh, pretty bad. When I measured it, I was putting through um, 70 to 80 microamps at 60 volts not something you want to do to this tube and uh, it was uh, it was pretty bright but it seemed to survive it it's still amplifying still getting hum on the on the pot with the finger whatever I don't think I've uh, markedly damaged the tube so anyway this uh, more or less proves principle that it can indeed uh, drive a transformer um, it sounds a little bit tinny in fact I think I, uh, I might want to put a little capacitance across the uh, the stage to, uh, of course, has to do with these headphones too. <laughs> Everything sounds a little tinnier with the old-fashioned headphones. And somebody made a note that the uh, the regen side was fluorescing more than the the amplifier side. Yeah, it's true, and that depends on where you set the regen pot. So if you back off on the regen pot, you can certainly operate the detector stage at a lower uh, bias level. Um, once you really put the, the uh, coupling in, you have to add so much regeneration that you may start to over dissipate the stage. Absolutely true. Um, the new tube, the Korg new tube, is now outfitted with a transformer and it drives headphones. So some of you are going to be excited about the Korg new tube regen actually driving headphones like a twinplex should. So in summary, is the Korg new tube ever going to replace a 6SN7? Absolutely not. It just does not have enough gain bandwidth compared to a real dual triode like a 6SN7. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say that maybe from VLF frequencies up to the AM band, it might equal the performance of the single tube Morgan receiver. So that's how much less gain the Korg new tube has 
compared to a real uh, vacuum tube. And of course the Morgan single tube regen is going to work fairly well up through short wave frequencies. So that's the conclusion. This was very experimental. This whole video series was an experiment to see if the Korg new tube could be used in an old-fashioned regen circuit. I hope you enjoyed this series.